Guess what? We back with another hard hitting video with all the information that you need to know about real estate. It is Thursday, September 21st, 2023. We are live. Mark Jenkins, a trusted realtor. And this is Ask a Realtor, episode number four. Today, we're going to be covering 10 tips that you need to know if you're buying a home in a high interest rate market because guess what regardless if you're ready to buy a home not ready to buy a home you still need to know what's going on and what other people are doing to be successful in this market and i get it like home affordability is at a multi-decade low the interest rates are at a multi-decade high but life goes on and people still have to move and of course, we all know that home ownership long term is the way to being able to build wealth or one of the easiest ways to be able to do it. So this video is not meant to encourage anybody to buy or to not buy. It's just it's just really meaning to educate you on how you should do it, how some of my clients are able to buy in this market, be successful, get really great rates. And we're going to talk about that today. But before we get into that, make sure that you like this video, share it, subscribe, because a lot of the information that we're going to cover today, as usual, you're not going to be able to find this information online or definitely not be able to see it on TV because nobody's trying to teach you how to do things the right way when it comes to real estate. So drop me a like, be sure to subscribe. We are live every single day or at least most days from Monday to Friday at 8.45 a.m. covering topics that you are going to want to know. Now, before we get into these 10 tips that I have for you, where are we today right now? Well, I don't know if you've been keeping track, but the Federal Reserve just decided to pause interest rate hikes yesterday. So for the time being, interest rates appear like they won't be going much higher, all right? Does that mean that they're necessarily going to be going lower? No, it does not mean that they're necessarily going to be going lower, but for the time being, it appears that they're not gonna be creeping up that much more. So where does that leave you as a home buyer? Well, if we're just going with what we're seeing today, it means that homes are probably the most unaffordable that they're gonna be, at least for right now, for the time being. And we're gonna see what happens in the future, of course, but these tips are even more important right now because if rates do start dropping or mortgage rates specifically do start dropping, you're going to need to use these tips to be able to make it a successful move when you're buying your next home. And that's whether you're here in Metro Atlanta or anywhere across the world. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump into this list. And after that, as always, we're going to be making live phone calls right here. I am going to, in the future, post a number so you all can go ahead, call into the broadcast, ask me whatever question that you have. So I'm going to go ahead and um, let me just holler at the chat real quick. Let me get me a comment in the, uh, let me pin me a comment in the chat so we can go ahead and, and get everything uh, straightened out there. And then outside of that, we're going to go ahead and jump into this list. But why is it important that you do this, right? Well, because, you know, with homes being unaffordable, you really got to use a different strategy to be able to get in them. The same strategies of just, you know, I'm just going to hire my friend to help me out with the transaction. And it just really doesn't work like it used to. Okay. So... You got to be strategic when you're buying these homes, okay? And these tips are going to help you really win the deal. Right now, we do have home inventory creeping up at a rate that we haven't seen in a couple of years. For the last couple of years, we've seen inventory just going down. And now the inventory is actually starting to creep up. You can actually um, really, really benefit from being able to use some of these tips so let me post this comment what is the best tip you have for someone buying a home right now 
Post that. And I'm gonna pin that. Boom. All right, cool. Let's get into it. 10 tips for home buyers looking to purchase a home when mortgage interest rates are high and affordability is a concern. All right, let's jump into it. Number one, budget wow. All right. So I know that the B word is uh, something that a lot of you all may or may not be familiar with, but it just says here, my first tip is create a detailed budget that accounts for all of your expenses and income to determine how much you can realistically afford every single month. Believe it or not, most people in their mind, they have an idea on what they would like to pay for their mortgage in their mind, right? So some people are like, Fifteen hundred dollars, two thousand, three thousand, five, ten, whatever, right? Whatever that number is. But very few people can actually justify that number. If I were to sit down with you and say, "How do you know that you can comfortably do that?" Most people would say, "Well, I make more than that." Okay, and that's that's very good that you can at least do that. But how many people have actually taken down all of the expenses that they have in a month? Cable bill, the internet electric bill, pest control, your car note, oil changes, maintenance on other things, buying clothes, entertainment, leisure, going out to eat, going grocery shopping. I think that you get it here, okay? So my number one, and these are not ranked in order of importance, but my number one uh, advice or tip for you when it comes to buying a home in today's market is you need to budget wisely. There are plenty of apps that you can use to come up with your budget. There are spreadsheets that you can use to come up with your budget. But before you buy a home today, you need to make sure that you write down every single thing that you pay for. And then only then will you know exactly how much you can truly afford when it comes to buying a home. Because here's the thing, emergencies happen, all right? And so if you have an emergency of, you know, extra, I don't know, $750 that month, right? The car breaks down, um, you get hurt, have to go to the emergency room, anything can happen. But if you don't have that budgeted, something's not going to get paid, right? And hopefully it's not going to be your mortgage that gets skipped, all right? So number one tip is budget wisely. Number two, save for a larger down payment. So in this market, because interest rates are high, you really want to make sure that you have a larger down payment um, for several reasons. First and foremost, a down payment protects your investment because if you only put down, I don't know, three and a half percent and homes go down three and a half percent, you're underwater, right? Because you still, if you wanted to sell the house, you still have to pay an agent. There may be some repairs that you have to make. So right now, you really, really, really want to make sure that you save for your down payment. Now, for some people, it's not going to be as possible for it as others. Of course, how much you're able to save for your down payment highly depends on how much income that you're making every year. So if you're not making a lot of income, it may be tough to do it. However, everybody can still save a little bit of something extra towards that down payment. The more you can put down up front, the lower your monthly mortgage payments will be, right? Save diligently for a substantial down payment. That means that maybe you're not able to buy a house right now. Maybe you say, I want to save 10%. Okay, 10% is, is a good number to strive for. A lot of people aren't able to do that. But at least in this market, while rates are high, while home affordability is low, Maybe you buy yourself a little bit of extra time by telling yourself you're going to wait to actually save up a larger down payment so you protect yourself, you protect your mobility. Because like I said before, if you buy that house and then you need to move in a year and then home prices dip just a little bit, then you might find yourself in a situation to where you can't go anywhere. And that's not really where you want to be. You'll be underwater. So save for a larger down payment. All right. That's tip number two. Moving on. Number three, shop for the best rates. I cannot tell you how often we see buyers in this market not shopping around for rates. I know that getting pre-qualified is like 
a really big thing for a lot of people. And it's great. It's a very worthwhile step in the home buying process. But the issue is, is just because you get pre-qualified with one lender, that doesn't mean that you necessarily got the best rate. The only way that you're going to know if you got the best rate is by shopping around. You should compare mortgage offers from multiple lenders to find the best interest rates and terms. Even in a high rate environment, there can be variations among lenders. And that's true because every single lender has a different rate. Like down, to, it could be down to the 10th of a point, right? And that matters, especially if it's coming out of your pocket, right? So if you get a pre-qualification letter, right, your next step should not always be to go out and start shopping with that. Sometimes your next step should be get on the phone, call up some other lenders and say, hey, I've got this pre-qualification letter from X bank or X, you know, uh, mortgage broker. And I want to see how you all compare against this. Remember, I don't know if you all are paying attention in the news, but there are a lot of banks that aren't really doing that well right now. Um, not anything of your concern unless you work at a bank. But when you are shopping for a mortgage, move these move these pre-quals around. Say, hey, uh, you know, this company gave me a 7.4. Um, do you think you can beat that? And you'll be surprised at what a lot of these lenders will do just to be able to get your business. Because at the end of the day, you're buying a house. And so you're not thinking of it as them as they are, but they make money off of this. This is the bread and butter for their businesses, mortgages. So more so now than ever, they're willing to compete for your dollar, but they're not going to be able to compete if you don't at least shop them around. So shop for the best rates. If you are applying for a mortgage within a certain amount of time, it's not going to count as multiple inquiries on your credit. All right. So if you go to apply for one lender one day, right, hit the next one up tomorrow. Right. Don't wait six weeks and then say, oh, I want to pull it again. Right. Then you're going to have multiple pulls on your credit. But if you go ahead and you get pre-qualified or you apply for a loan and you apply for a couple of them in a very short amount of time, a couple of days or so, that's only going to count as one pool because the credit bureaus are going to recognize that you are shopping, you are comparison shopping, looking to get that best rate. So then that tip, shop for the best rates. Trust me, it could save you thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars on your mortgage. And then not there's a, another piece of that is that a lot of other lenders will offer things like um, free free refinancing down the road and other incentives that other lenders may not be able to offer you. But you won't know unless you shop those rates. Next up, consider an adjustable rate mortgage. Now, I know that a lot of people are not necessarily going to, uh, going to like this idea. But here's the thing, all right? If, 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 and that's a big if, if you believe that mortgage interest rates are going to come down in the future, Put your money where your mouth is, you know, get an adjustable rate mortgage to where, hey, you know, you can do a something like a three, two, one buy down, which is, you know, the first year you have three points, three uh, percent less than market rate. I know a lot of new construction companies are doing something similar to that and it adjusts up. But when that fourth year comes around, you're going to go to market rate. So if you believe that mortgage interest rates are going to come down over the next couple of years, this may be a viable option for you. Now, of course, it's riskier because adjustable rate mortgages offer uh, lower initial rates, and they can be only a short-term solution if you plan to refinance or sell the property before the rate adjusts. So there is a little bit of risk in that, but come on, there's risk in everything. I mean, you get in your car every day, you drive, and you know, that's you know, not always the uh, the, the uh, safest way to travel. I mean, by numbers, at least. I mean, flying is a little bit safer, but not to get sidetracked, right? Consider adjustable rate mortgages. Just consider it. You may find something that works for you. You may decide that you would rather, um, you know, be locked in to uh, a fixed rate. But an adjustable rate is definitely one of the ways that you can get a lower rate than today's market rate. And then, like I said before, it's worth exploring. Talk to the lender, talk to your realtor, talk to me and figure out exactly which option is the best for you based on your uh, financial standing and also uh, based on 
um, what some of your goals are for the future. Okay, cool. Next up, we have extend the long term. This is not really that common for, you know, especially for most, most buyers. I mean, most buyers in today's climate, everybody's using um, a, a 30 year mortgage, right? But if you're not using a 30 year mortgage, and if you are using a 15 year, one thing that you can do to make uh, buying a home a little bit more affordable or easier for you is to consider um, extending the loan. So if you were looking at 15, maybe you consider extending to a, uh, maybe you consider extending to a 30 year mortgage, right? A 30 year mortgage is gonna offer you a lower payment as it says here, a longer loan term such as a 30 year mortgage can reduce monthly payments but may result in higher overall interest costs. So it's pros and cons there. Would you rather have a lower monthly payment or would you rather have higher interest costs? For most people, especially in today's market, most people aren't even gonna be in the home for 30 years anyway. So if you were doing like a 15 year or a 30 year, some people would rather save money because they know that they only be in that home between five to seven, to nine years and it really won't make a difference having that longer payment and saving a little bit of money on the front end. But just like it says here, be aware of the trade-offs, right? You have to at least analyze the situation to be able to find out which is best for you. But if you're looking at a 15 year, of course, a 30 year is going to be a little bit cheaper, at least on the monthly payment side. Next up, we have improve your credit score, right? If you were sitting on the sidelines waiting to purchase a home, one of the best things that you can do right now while you're waiting is to improve your credit score. Now, you can get pre-approved for loans like as low as a 580 if you're using FHA and some other loan products like a VA might even require you or might even accept you at a lower rate, at a lower credit score, excuse me. But a higher credit score can help you qualify for better interest rates. Pay down debts, correct errors on your credit report, and maintain good financial habits. The better your credit score is, not only are you going to get a lower interest rate, but you're also going to be more prepared to be a homeowner by taking care of things when they're supposed to. That's really all that credit is. Do you pay your bills on time? And if you're paying your bills on time and you have a good credit score, that's going to make you much more likely to not only enjoy home ownership but take care of the home and be in a better position to um, really be able to benefit off of home ownership. You don't want a bunch of late payments and late fees and things like that. So right now, if you are still waiting, this is one of the top things that you need to do. Improve your credit score. What should you get your credit score to? As perfect as it can be. The higher, the better. So the highest your credit score can be, get it up there. Pay off those debts. Call somebody, contact anybody that you need to who does credit repair or credit restoration. Get some of those things taken off your credit and really like let's 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 get it to a point to where it needs to be to, uh you know, make it really beneficial for you in the future. All right. Next up, explore government assistance programs. All right. So. Some government programs offer assistance to first time home buyers, including down payment assistance or lower interest rates. So especially if you are a first time home buyer, you definitely should be checking out what's available for you um, from the government. There are governments that do it. There are nonprofits um, that do it. There's like the USDA program, which doesn't require any down payment. Um, of course, like your debt to income ratio has to be, you know, a little bit different than what it would be for an FHA loan. But if you can keep more money in your pocket or if you can keep more money from having you having to put that down, maybe you can buy down your interest rate. Maybe you can do a little bit um, something different to where you keep more money for yourself. It makes it easier for you to purchase and it just overall ends up in a better experience for you. So explore those government assistance programs, right? They have programs out there to help people get into homes. But of course, if you don't know about them, if you don't go find them, then you're not going to be able to participate in them. So explore government assistance programs. That's another tip for when you're buying home in a high mortgage interest rate 
market. I think that this is the one that's uh, really overlooked, all right? Negotiating with sellers. Now, a lot of this falls on your agent. A lot of this falls on you. You have to be in the mindset that you want to get a deal in today's market. And I know it seems hard. I know there are still situations where properties have multiple offers on them. That is still very common in today's market. However, you still want to at least be able to negotiate with the seller, right? Some of the things that you can negotiate with the seller are closing costs. One thing that's very popular right now is that, you know, if you can, if you find a property, let's say for 350,000, right? And in your mind, you're able to get the seller to go down to 325, for example, right? Does it make more sense to go down to 325 so your principal is only 325 or does it make more sense in a high interest rate market to take that $25,000 and buy down the interest rate? Leave the principal at 350, buy down the interest rate. Well, on one side, if you just buy down the principal, yeah, you're saving $25,000 up front. But if you buy down the rate, you're saving a lot more than $25,000 in the long run. So in a buyer's market, which real estate is hyper-localized, so there are some areas around Metro Atlanta which are more towards a buyer's market than a seller's market. Now, I said more towards. Now, I don't believe that in general we're in a buyer's market, but I do believe that it is overstated how much of a seller's market that we're in. We have a lot of sellers right now that are having to cut prices and do all different types of things to be able to move these properties. So in a buyer's market, you have more negotiating power. Today, you have more negotiating power. Try to negotiate a lower purchase price or ask the seller to cover some closing costs, all right? My personal opinion is that if you're able to get the seller to cover some, um, to lower the price, don't take the lower price, tell them to buy down your rate or negotiate them buying down your rate. Ask them to pay for your buy down or ask them to uh, buy down your rate and lock it in permanently, right? Uh, probably would take a little bit more money than buying, than doing that buy down, but obviously we can help you out and figure out, you know, which one is the, uh, the best or the most ideal and saves you the most money. But please be sure to negotiate with sellers, right? Right now, a lot of sellers are panicking because they're seeing that homes are not selling as quick. For the most part, some are. Um, a few are, but homes are not selling as quick as they used to. All right. Now keep in mind that if someone's selling a house, they've got somewhere to be, they've got somewhere to go. There's a reason why they're trying to get off of that property. And if they can get off of it faster by selling it to you, you owe it to yourself to be able to at least negotiate with the seller for terms that are friendly and beneficial for you and your financial situation. All right. Next tip we have is to prioritize needs over wants. So right now is not necessarily a time to get all the bells and whistles on the home. If you can, great. But right now you want to focus on what do you need, not what you want. How much space do you actually need? What area do you need to be in? Um, what school district do you need to be in? Um, how many bedrooms do you need? How many bedrooms do you want and how many bedrooms do you need? They're totally different things. Because if you ask me how many bedrooms I want, I would probably want 20 bedrooms so I can, you know, have space for all of my family members. I could always just like invite anybody to my house and they wouldn't have to ever like use an Airbnb or a hotel or anything like that. But the reality is, is how much do I need? Well, I need about four, five, I would say five bedrooms um, in my house. So you got to prioritize those things. Don't get fancy when you're buying a house right now. Now, like I said before in the previous tip, you still do want to negotiate, but before you get out there and go searching for homes, you need to understand what's a need and what's a want. Focus on finding a home that meets your essential needs rather than all of your desires. Do you need a swimming pool? Probably not. Do you need um, a house that is um, completely renovated and costs two hundred thousand dollars more than one that isn't probably not but of course it's on it's up to your own preferences and you can decide what you would like but my tip to you is prioritize your needs over you over your wants 
And that's going to always make things a lot easier for you when you're purchasing a home in this environment. All right. And the last tip that we have today is plan for future rate increases. Okay. Consider how future rate hikes might impact your ability to make payments. Ensure you have a financial cushion for unexpected changes. So a lot of you all will be getting fixed rate mortgages. So you're probably wondering, well, why would I want to plan for future rate increases? Well, um, when rates increase across the board, it makes everything else more expensive. So yes, your mortgage may be at a fixed rate, but your credit cards aren't. Or um, if you apply for a loan in the future, it may be a lot higher than it is. So you want to think about the environment that we're in right now. Do you have enough money if things keep going up, right? You want to factor that into when you're searching for a home, when you're thinking about the budget that you want to spend. Like just because you get pre qual for a certain amount, that doesn't mean you have to spend all of it. You don't have to. You can spend some of it. You can spend... You know, in this market, you really can't spend half of it. But, you know, you really want to make sure that you actually plan for those uh, rate increases. If rates drop to zero, then um, rates wise, then that's not the worst thing. Of course, that will drive inflation through the roof that I don't know if we'll ever be able to recover from. But you still want to make sure that you at least plan for those rate increases so you're not caught off guard if. Two years later, rates have gone up and it costs everything else that's tied to debt to also go up. Some of those things you might need, like a brand new car or anything like that. You want to make sure that you plan for those things. All right. Now, those are just 10 tips that you can use right now in today's high interest rate market to be able to be successful when you're buying a home. Please be sure to comment below. Let me know what you think about these suggestions that I've made here. Do you think that I left something out? Is there anything that you would like to add to any of the suggestions that I have made? Please be sure. Comment below. If you are buying a home, is there anything on this list that you're doing right now that I didn't mention that you think would be helpful for people to know? Comment below. We're all in the business of making sure that people just like you can also win when it comes to buying a home right now. And also, if you are waiting, what are you waiting and doing while you're waiting, right? Are you working on your credit? Are you still shopping around? Are you still trying to figure out what area that you want to be in? I would love to hear what you and your family are planning on doing when it comes to your next real estate purchase. 